I, before I get into my talk, which is up there on the screen, I just want to first say, I, so I am half Armenian, my best half. Um, I, I was American born. Uh, and, and my first trip to Armenia was actually just this past winter. I spent three months here as a Kiva fellow, volunteering here in Armenia. It was a lot of fun. Um, but aside from all the fun that I got out of it, I came back with a lot of inspiration. I came back thinking there is something here in this country that needs to be shared, not just among my fellow Armenians, but among the world. And I kept meeting people, people many of whom you'll see today. I kept meeting these people and I kept thinking, why aren't they on a stage here in front of you uh, next to a big TED logo? Uh, and it just so happened that yes, TED has sort of opened up their brand to let anyone host a TED conference, and it just so happens that they, they needed someone who is official uh, to help sort of sign off on the license. But, but that's really all I did. Uh, aside from helping get a website up, the real people who made this all happen are all the people here who have gotten all the cameras set up, who have organized, who have slaved over getting this conference ready for you, and it is no small feat. Uh, so let's, can we get some applause for all of them? Yeah. And I'm, I'm very, very, very proud to say that this is the first TEDx in the Caucasus. And, and I know there are a lot more great things. Yeah, we can applaud for that, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and there, there is something really special about the, the ideals of this conference. And I hope that you all can get a lot out of this. Um, because I knew, once I got to spend time with a lot of the fantastic Armenians here, I knew that this is something that Armenia needed. And I'm just so happy to see this all come to fruition and, and come to fruition so wonderfully. So let's have a great day. And now to bring it down a notch, here's my talk. Um, <laughs> so hi, I'm Alexis. Um, I, this is sort of a follow-up to the aforementioned TED Talk that I gave a little while back, uh, which was about a website that I co-founded with Steve Huffman called Reddit. Uh, but it was actually about a whale named Mr. Splashy Pants. I won't belabor you with the details of that talk, only to say that it was a, a very short talk about a very funny story about a whale. Uh, but it was really about social media. Now, a reasonable question for you to be asking yourself right now is what are social media? Well, quite simply, it's an opportunity for us to create and share content online. Uh, and there's a whole range of things, really, that can be shared. It can be through Twitter, it can be through Facebook, it can be through Reddit, of course. Uh, and there's no shortage of new things coming up every day. And it's really about these ideas that are worth spreading. This is the motto of TED. Uh, but what social media enables us all to do uh, really remarkably, is share ideas. Now, some of these are extremely important ideas. These are ideas that have evidence that can be shared and ought to be shared as quickly and as, and as broadly as possible. These are other things, there are other things that are much less important uh, and much more absurd that is just as easily shared. Uh, furthermore, there, there are things that are just, that are corporate, that are branding, that are marketing, and, and those also have a place in this world. Uh, there are other things that are extremely personal and extremely heartfelt and that also live in this ecosystem. But the reality is, online, all of these things are created equal. Uh, and so for every piece of important information that needs to be shared, there's, there's a piece of misinformation or disinformation that is also trying to be shared. Uh, and it, it's this ruthless battleground where ideas can hopefully triumph that are great. And we're all here with this theme of Beyond Borders. And this, this actually applies in a lot of ways to social media and to the internet, uh, but really starts here with the borders of our own minds, of our own brains, where all of these great ideas that we're all coming up with are born. Whether or not they leave is the real question. And, and so long as we live in a place where we have access to an open and free internet, the borders, the traditional borders that define countries are much, much less important, so long as we can get those ideas out into a global world. This is the internet. This is your blank canvas. You can cut off a piece of the internet and create whatever you want with it. And that is how I hope you look at this. See it as an opportunity and accept the fact that all of these ideas are all fighting for the same attention. But so long as there is a degree of net neutrality, there is an ability for us all to have our voice. Now, how do you do this? You want to invite serendipity. Now, how does one invite serendipity? Now, th there are probably a few ways to do this, but the best way is it explained with a story. Uh, this is a show, very popular uh, comedy show, that's about satirizing sort of right-wing punditry in the U.S. The, the host is a man named Stephen Colbert, and he does a fantastic job enabling his online following. He does a fantastic job with social media. He talks about all these tools regularly. He, he talks about his fans as the Colbert Nation, and they do all kinds of silly things on his behalf. 
These are not fans of the Colbert Nation. These are actually Tea Party ralliers who are out in D.C. recently on the anniversary of the Martin Luther King I Have a Dream speech at the very same location. They were led by a man who had an idea, Glenn Beck, who is a right-wing commentator and pundit, uh, but who the Internet found pretty amusing. Uh, they, they saw his idea and, and mocked it. This is a reality of an online world where people have the freedom to voice their opinions. And someone on Reddit uh, who just on a lark decided, wouldn't it be great if Stephen Colbert held his own sort of counter rally to the Glenn Beck rally that happened? And, and all of a sudden, a few people started saying, this is a good idea, and it started building. And it made sense because a guy like Stephen Colbert actually makes his living making fun of political folks like Glenn Beck. So it started gaining momentum. They created a website restoring truthiness. They, they wanted people to sort of get behind this idea of having this rally, making it really happen. And it actually got his attention. He started talking about it on the show. He mentioned the fact that the site was created. He mentioned the fact the Facebook group was created. And it started snowballing. And once Reddit got intrigued by this idea, they, they started going a step further. They thought, how can we really, really convince him that we want him to hold this rally in Washington, D.C.? Rallies are a lot of fun. I mean, a lot of fun, but they're, they're a lot of work to organize. So, it dawned on someone that he's on the board of a nonprofit called Donors Choose. It's a fantastic not for profit in the US that basically says most teachers in poor districts have to pay out of pocket for their own school supplies. Uh, and this gives you an opportunity as a donor to say, give $25 to help a student cover the cost of his or her classroom expenses. Now, given that we are the richest, the United States rather, is the richest country in the history of the world, it is kind of sad that teachers have to do this, but it's a fantastic not-for-profit that's been able to allow classrooms like Mr. T's. I don't know if you can read this, but if you wouldn't give money to Mr. T's classroom, there's probably something wrong with you. Um, it gives an opportunity for people to, to get this money to the people who need it. And so Reddit decided to create their own fundraiser page. Very simple procedure. They said, let's create this fundraiser page and let's beat the person who's generated the most funds so far. That was U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Now, she had done a fantastic job raising nearly $30,000. And so Reddit said, we can beat this. We'll give ourselves a week. An anonymous donor even said, if you guys beat this in a week, I'll throw on another 1,000. Well, Reddit beat it. Uh, Reddit beat it in eight hours. <laughs> and they obliterated it. <clears throat> now, yes, Reddit is awesome. This, this community is is absurdly wonderful, but it, it doesn't stop there. Stephen Colbert actually reached out in an open letter to the internet. I'm not expecting you to read this, but you can find it online. He reached out with an open letter to the Reddit community saying he was so floored by their participation, and he was so impressed, and he was so touched that, you know, because they knew of his involvement and interest in this not-for-profit, that they wanted to help. He said, kudos, you know, this is really great. But, you know, that was a special moment. Getting a photo from him actually posing with a Stephen Colbert Reddit alien mug was even better, but it, it actually gets better than that. <clears throat> They're actually hosting this rally. It's actually happening on October 30th. I hope to see you all there in Washington, D.C. Um, but it should be quite the event, and in keeping with his motto of satirizing, uh, he's chosen the Keep Fear Alive theme for this rally. But so this rally is actually coming to fruition, and Donors Choose actually raised a ton of money. <clears throat> but here's what's interesting. Donors Choose didn't even realize this was happening until their servers started going down. They had never seen such donation volume ever before. And, and what was really, really impressive was they took that next step. And that's, the, that's engaging. Uh, and you can always remember the famous command of Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Uh, if you can be honest and be open when you engage, you can hit that next level. You can see, hopefully, if you've got really good eyesight, Someone from the tech team at Donors Choose actually came on to Reddit after we took down their servers and, and initiated a bit of what we call nerd porn, where he diagnosed all the technical difficulties that came through in trying to keep the site online. But Reddit loved this. In fact, the executive team of Donors Choose came on and did a real-time interview with the entire Reddit community. The CEO, the CEO all came on to express their interest and gratitude and then also to just answer questions and do it honestly and candidly. Well, 10 days later, I actually take that back, there was actually a lot of press in between. Lots of folks were picking up on this story because they were just so interested in it. It was an amusing headline. And so ten, 10 days and a lot of press later, this fundraiser had still been going on, and it had raised $280,000, which is the mark it roughly sits at at this moment. I can't believe that this has now happened in the span of a couple of weeks, and we still have about a month to go until the rally. I'm hoping it raises a half million. I don't know if it will. I'm hoping the Reddit community can pull this off, but already it's a remarkable feat. And Mr. Splashy Pants was a great story. I'd like to think it still is a great story, but it was one in which a bunch of people got together and voted on a poll. Now, it's one thing to get people to 
go to a website and participate. It's another thing to get them to part with their hard-earned cash. And this was an accomplishment. And it was sort of orthogonal to the actual goal, which was just having a rally. But it was a wonderful added bonus. I think you'd all agree. And this is, that, this is that magic, that idea of something going that viral. And the difficulty here is that nothing can really predict it. I, I'm sure that Redditor, the Reddit user who came up with that idea of hosting a rally would have never expected fundraising $280,000 for a not-for-profit like Donors Choose, but it just kind of happened. And the most important thing was that that idea was put out there because so many ideas end up here. This is a deliberately blank slide to show you the nothingness <laughs> that happens when you keep those ideas locked into your brain. And if you can imagine getting that idea out in the world and opening someone's mind to something new, to a new perspective like we're doing here at this TEDx, and then going a step further and maybe even getting them to open their wallets, you've really accomplished something. And if you can come to terms with the fact that all those walls, all those barriers have come down, and really, really the only barrier left to getting your idea to the rest of the world is your brain. It's getting it out of your head and online and in front of people. Those big ideas, they, they traditionally have come from up top. Now they're going to start coming from down below, but further, they'll come from everywhere uh, because those, those top-down ideas certainly won't stop and, and those bottom-up ideas certainly won't stop. And, and there is just going to be a tremendous surge of people contributing. The important thing, of course, is being that one idea that stands out, the one that really catches on. And unfortunately, there's no secret list. There's no, nothing you can check off to make sure that this will happen. But what you can do is, is, is events like this. The, the, the thinking behind something like TEDxERVAN is... I'm here in front of a room full of people with ideas worth sharing. And so whether or not it's a software that you want to write, you, you get it online. Whether it's a story you want to tell, put it on a blog, put it online. Whether it's a video you want to produce or photos you want to share, get them online. Because the most important thing is to share these ideas. And until you can get beyond the border of your own mind, your idea will go nowhere. Thank you. <laughs>